Thank, thank you. Thank you, the organizers, uh, for giving me this opportunity to share some thoughts and experiences with you. I must say that what I'm sharing with you is based on my work in the area of post-service research and innovation for the last 30 years, uh, starting from New Zealand and spent many years also in the Middle East, where people import most of their food. So I had to set up a post-service research innovation program there. And now in the last 15 years, in the African continent based at Stellenbosch University. So there are some issues that I think we need to bring forward that will form the foundation why we think what we do is important in terms of research and innovation. We believe that we have a food problem, food systems problem on the continent. And this food systems problem can be associated with the production side. It can also be related to the problem of food security or insecurity on the continent. Of course, that is linked to the related with food losses, but also, there's also the safety component of this food systems failure. And various scientists, researchers, policymakers have had perspectives and views issues on this. Another issue that I would like to bring on the table also, what we call the broad basket approach to solving the food security, insecurity challenge on the continent. Historically, you see a lot of the data on grains and cereals, but there is evidence, as you can see in the graph there, that the value of the horticultural products, fruit and vegetables, more than 30 years ago has overtaken the cereals and grains. So this is very, very important for two dimensions. One is the supply of nutrients, micro and phytonutrients. The other aspect of this horticultural revolution is also income generation, which is very, very important. And the way I describe this to my students is that I stopped going to the farm when I was a little boy in Nigeria many, many years back. We have two daughters. They don't farm, we don't farm. But we don't have a food security pro insecurity problem. Why is that? Because we have income. So when we talk about the solving the food security challenge on the continent, we must go beyond just production and also think about um, income generation. This is very important because we need to do that research. We need that knowledge that will drive this horticultural revolution. If you look at the graph up there on the top, you see the crops that feed Asia. You can see the critical role of paddy rice up there. Far, far, the closest is when you combine wheat and barley. If you look down at the crops that feed Africa, the top three are about the same percentage, followed very closely by the perishables, our yam, our cassava, our sweet potatoes, and plantains. I just want you to think about this. Now, I hear the common story when I move around the continent that Africans love rice. So we spend billions importing rice. My argument is that the Asians have invested so much over the last 40, 50 years developing rice through research and innovation. And now the tide has turned that Africans love rice. What were we eating 40, 50 years ago? What about if we have developed the value chains for yam, for cassava, for sweet potato, for, and so on and so forth? Who else in the world, what would have we, the rest of the world be consuming? We also need to do some research and innovation on the, on the ground. You cannot import everything. It's impossible. Even in North America, Europe are still investing more heavily in post-service research. What about the part of the world where you have the biggest problem? So who is trying to solve the problem on the ground? It's not just about importation of technology. We also need human capacity, people on the ground. So I just use some simple statistics from the premier journal for those of us who work in the area of post-service. Look at Africa as the biggest post-service loss problem. But we also are the least contributors to the generation of this knowledge. Shouldn't most of the post-service research be happening in the, where you have the biggest problem? And the little that is done, two countries, South Africa and Egypt, are the main contributors. Just on the right-hand side, look at what's happening in China and Spain. When this journal was formed, I was there in Australia back in 1991. Um, China's contribution for the first two or three years was almost zero. In the last five or seven years, China is the biggest contributor to publication in the research and innovation in post-service technology, followed by Spain. What have they done right, and what have we been doing wrong? This is very, very important. So on the ground, on a practical level, what have we done? So in the South African Research and Post-Service Technology, which I set up, we have two main, what we call our mantra. We want to link production to markets, because we believe market is a key driver, very, very important. We want to make every harvest count. I just want to use a very simple example of a crop that was not known on the African continent or South Africa but 15 or 12 years ago. So when I arrived there, the farmers came to me, many farmers came to me and said, we know you've done some work in post service. What do we need to know, do in order to get our product into the market, both local and internationally? 
post service losses, the quality waste is a real problem. You can see in some cultivars up to 24% is lost and wasted. You can see that truck is full of fruit that was going to be dumped. So this is just a real problem. It's not just a scientific theoretical problem. So we took a market-led approach to our work here by understanding the value chains and supply chains and setting up research that looks at what we do in the lab and matching it with exactly what the market wants so that can track the movement of the commodities there. This is a typical PAG research from this work here. Nice publications, we get high ratings, high citation. But that's, look at what the farmer wants on the bottom hand side. They want to know when is the right time for me to harvest my crop so that losses and wastage will be minimum. So we give them some numbers of for all those publications that you see on the left hand side in the previous page, these are the real hardcore information that will drive the movement of the commodities in the value chain. Some fruit, when you look at them from outside, they look nice. When you open them, you can't eat them, you throw them away. So we have to look at alternative ways of using the fruit. We looked into modified atrocyte packaging that will all allow us to use the edible part of the fruit here. We also looked at non-destructive technologies for quality control and assurance so that you don't need to spend all the time cutting the fruit. You can scan and be able to tell the farmers alternative things they can do with the crop. Packaging is an important contributor to food loss and food waste. Sometimes they cannot protect the commodity properly. We have redesigned the packaging for the fruit industry. In fact, we have a new packaging, we believe, that can revolutionize globally the handling of pomegranate fruit. What about those commodities that in the air cannot be eaten at all? We are converting them into new value-added products to oil, to powder that can be used in the food value chain, and so on and so forth. In fact, the South African government had done a lot of studies to demonstrate the socioeconomic impact of our research. We have built African human capacity on the ground in the continent, continuing this work when people like myself are going to retire very, very soon. Um, partnership, very, very critical here. Now, this is very, very crucial to whatever we have achieved here. You can look at the top hand side, you can see what we call our core funding people. But we have partners around the world, different universities that we work with because you cannot do these things alone. Below that are farmers, organizations. So what we're doing here is that they fund this work because it is important for them. This is an important lesson. The bottom that below that are networks around the continent, agricultural research organizations that we partner with. And the bottom part is what we call the PPP where we have organizations contributing money to do this work. To summarize this experience, we propose the idea of milk as a proposed framework for investment in post-service loss and research. And that includes understanding the markets, investing in infrastructure, leadership, very, very important, institutions, local institutions, and technical know-how. And just to finish, there's evidence that if we do it right, we can get the return on investment. And the last one is the issue of policy and institutions. Look at the return on investment, 14,000. No wonder Kofi Annan said that this, this is the most important single factor in eradicating poverty on the African continent. I'm just going to finish with the last slide here. No need for, to go through this. Two weeks ago, I had this couple visit my office in South Africa. And look at what they were asking me, based on the work they have seen, we have done for the industry. They want to partner with us. This a young couple that grows pomegranate, they came to my office. We showed them what we do. They said, how can we partner with you so that our own staff can be positioned in your lab to solve our problems? This is one of the ways to go. It's not the only way to go. And that's the, what we're proposing, that the role of research and innovation, we can contribute to reducing post harvest loss and food waste. Thank you. So thank you, Linus, for the nice uh, demonstration that uh, you have to put many players together, right? And uh, science has to take this topic as one of the challenges, as we take so many, right? And then uh, solutions will come, uh, I'm sure. Okay, so uh, now that the three speakers uh, concluded their presentations, we can open these three last talks for questions. Okay, um, yes, the lady, I, I can't read your name from here. Anjo. Okay, please. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, to my African brothers, I'm curious how you're connecting the dots between post-harvest loss and waste and urbanization, 
We know that Africa is a continent that's rapidly urbanizing. It seems to me that the intersection between this issue of loss and waste really meets the African continent at that moment of urbanization, uh, right alongside with what our sister was saying about food waste in Nairobi. And so I'd be really curious um, how you're thinking about where you meet urbanization, um, urban food security, urban farming. Just curious about how you're thinking about that. No, Ben, right? Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Opara. Um, my question is basically about rice in West Africa. It's not the most nutritious. I understand that we need to diversify. I'm all in, but I'm highly concerned about food supply, uh, rice supply to West Africa. If India or China have a cold, West Africa is out of rice. And um, governments have been prioritizing local paddy growing and, and rice milling um, really for, for years, since 2008, right? The food crisis. And nothing is happening. And why is that? Well, that's a question, right? Is anybody going to answer, please? Uh, thank you. I'll just start with the first um, question about um, urban food security on the African continent and um, the relationship between poor service loss and waste and urbanization. I, I think one of the things that is really a hindrance to addressing some of the major developmental challenges on the continent of Africa is the lack of evidence and data. Most of the time, most of the issues, it's just everybody just saying what they want. And I challenge each of us, including myself, that this is an important area that we need to invest whatever that resource is, whatever little we have. We need the evidence to drive policy. I get phone calls from parliamentarians asking me about food loss and food waste in rural areas and the cities. When I ask them to give one master's student scholarship to go and collect the data, they say there is no money. So we cannot give what we don't have. It is easy for me, based on my many years of experience, to say this is the amount, this is what I think is the problem. But I think it is wrong. So my, my answer to that question is we need to invest in getting that knowledge and information so that we can provide evidence-based guidance towards policy. I think there's every indication that food security is also a major problem in the urban areas. We have a lot of urban squalor. When people move from my village and move to Lagos, everybody in the village thinks that they are in a rosy, nice, beautiful city. But we know that most of, them, most of them are living in squalor. Most of them don't have jobs. They have food insecurity problem. Now, if you put a divide between them, you also have another proportion of the population who live in affluence with a lot of potential food wastage going on here. But I don't have any, enough evidence to really suggest what may be going on there. I don't have that, and there will be an opportunity for more work to do. The second question is about rice, the concern. Your concern is very, very right. But it is actually for somebody, any well-meaning African who is resident on the continent, who knows also what has happened with regard to agricultural transformation around the world, is very, very shameful. It makes you cry. Because what we're talking about rice problem, rice supply problem in Africa, what have we done with our food production? How come suddenly rice becomes an index of food security on the continent? How? What were we doing when the Asians were having their green revolution based on rice and wheat? What were we doing? Now, that is history. We can forget the past. But what are we doing now? What is the average yield of yam, cassava in Nigeria? Who knows? The least you can get from anywhere in the world. What is the average yield of plantain per hectare on the continent? We have not optimized anything. So, yes, your concern is real, but perhaps, perhaps the worst is yet to come. And maybe when that worst happens, all of us will be ginger to take proper action and invest in what is important to drive the real transformation on our continent, instead of passing the blame. I think that's what's happening at the moment. We have issues in Nigeria now where some borders have been closed. Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Mr. Kwesley can say a little bit more about what's going on in the continent and in Nigeria in particular. But these are real issues confronting people on a daily basis. But I think we have to invest 
whether it is in production or in research or post-service. We must do the right thing. The magic will not happen from somewhere else.